Okay, Assalamualaikum and uh, salam sejahtera to all my students. So this is a video for chapter 4.3. Uh, so in the previous video, we have learned uh, subchapter 4.1 and 4.2. And this time we are going to learn about structure, properties and applications of ceramics. Okay. So as uh, what as I mentioned earlier, the chapter four is more on the theory, uh, theory based knowledge. So, uh, at the end of this video, uh, you should have to do the uh, mind map or any approach of uh, how to make you study easier. Uh, but I advise you to do the mind map or make a checklist for everything that you have learned in this video. Uh, otherwise, uh, you will uh, have a hard time to understand all about the subject 4.3. Okay, so that's how I did during my study. I do the ch I did the checklist. I did the mind map, and then it. Uh, helps me help me to memorize all of this uh, learning knowledge here okay so the outcomes of the subtopic uh, is to define and classify ceramic materials including traditional and engineering ceramics okay so uh, the second the second uh, outcome is to describe uh, the mechanical properties of ceramics and finally you have to describe various ceramic applications okay uh, are you ready I'm sorry if this video is quite boring but uh, this is how we learn the material science you have to read a lot you have to memorize a lot and then you have to understand all the uh, learnings that you uh, have right now in this video okay so what is the ceramic so uh, ceramic is the burnt stuff the bakar okay uh, desirable properties a high temperature heat treatment process okay uh, it can be achieved uh, to get the desirable properties by firing the bakar at the high temperature heat treatment process so uh, I think most of you have uh, at least have watched or know something how uh, how the people uh, manufacture or create the ceramics. Okay, they, they they burn in the oven or in the satu rumah rumah bakar and then uh, at high very high temperature to get that ceramics. Okay, uh, so by definition uh, and inorganic compound consisting of a metal so uh, it have a metal and then non-metal so if you have only metal it is not ceramic right the metal it is the metal uh, metal elements and then you get the metal met, uh, metal uh, products but if you mix the metal and non-metal then you can have uh, ceramics because it is inorganic compound Okay, so so uh, to memorize the definition of ceramic, you make a mind map. So ceramics is the element of metal and non-metal in organic. Okay, so. Uh, this is the example how I memorize things during my studies. Okay. And then the crystal structure, uh, it has more complex than metals. Okay. Most ceramics, metallic and non metallic elements, ionic or predominantly ionic, but having some covalent carrier, uh, character. Okay. Type of ceramic materials, example of this is the oxide. This is non oxide. Example of the oxide material, ceramic material is aluminium oxide and zirconium oxide. And for the non-oxide is carbide or silicate. Okay. Uh, 
okay so this is the class of ceramic based on engineering applications we have traditional ceramics and we have engineering ceramic so by the term of traditional so we know this is the ceramics that we normally found uh, in our daily life that uh, is created by using the, tra the traditional ways conventional ways uh, as an example of brick butter and kitchenware like this your your teacup and then your tile mosaic kan? okay so this is the traditional ceramics and for the engineering ceramics by based on this engineering term itself we know that this is uh, the ceramics that we manufactured using the engineering method okay uh, as example of uh, applications in engineering ceramics the products of uh, this approach this method is refracting tubing Quick cubicle, spark plug insulator, and advanced ceramics and electro ceramics. So basically, the engineering ceramics uh, is used when you you have uh, when you want to have a product that is uh, that has specified properties for that application. Okay, but for the traditional ceramics here, we just want that for the common purpose of our daily usage daily life okay so uh, this is the general properties of ceramics uh, maybe it has a specific uh, properties based on the uh, different types of ceramics but this is the general properties uh, basically the ceramics has extreme hardness high wear resistant yes uh, corrosion resistant of course it uh, it is not metal so it doesn't have corrosion uh, problem and then heat resistance uh, yes uh, it has very uh, high heat resistance because of low thermal conductivity and low thermal expansion that's why you use the uh, tea cup from the ceramics uh, when you put your tea water tea tea coffee and so on right Okay, so low ductility, yes, of course, because of its low ductility, it has very brittle. Uh, very brittle means that it is uh, easily to crack, easily to break, right? But uh, it also has low toughness, uh, low density, and very high strength at elevated temperature because the ceramic can uh, withstand or, uh, yeah, uh, it's very good at high temperature boleh tahan panas sangat lah okay. uh, just for your general knowledge uh, if you have free time uh, find the YouTube uh, which car has ceramic brick ah. Okay, uh, normally in our car, we have uh, this brake using the metal, but uh, in the high-end cars, like supercars or hypercars or sport cars, they maybe have the ceramic brake instead of uh, steel this, uh, this brake, this that you use, that uh, manufactured by using the steel. So, if you can find the YouTube, which car has the ceramic braids and you can wonder why it used the ceramic instead of the steel okay maybe because of some of these properties that only ceramic has and the steel do not have okay uh, and then uh, properties yep so this is kind of many things that you have to memorize so I just leave it to you Okay, uh, I try to make it uh, make this video simpler and I do not want just to read one by one uh, slides in this video it just become very boring and just waste your time so make sure you study uh, and learn how to memorize many things by using the mind map or checklist method okay so uh the thermal expansion coefficient thermal conductivity thermal short resistance that have listed here is more explained in this slide so you can read by your own and then okay let's do this exercise 
uh, list the differences between metal, polymer, and ceramic in terms of density, ductility, and hardness. So, you this is the example. Uh, this is the exercise, and this exercise uh, can help you to memorize these things because this may be favorite question that will be will come out in your final exam maybe i don't know but this uh very helpful for you to memorize uh, the difference between metal polymer and ceramic so uh, you can uh, uh, create a table maybe metal polymer and ceramics so metal that you have learned in the chapter 3 polymer that you have learned in 4.1 and 4.2 and ceramics that you are learning right now so you can list down the differences between these materials uh, in in terms of density ductility and hardness so at least you know the general differences between them and then maybe you can memorize those things Okay, and then the second question is to list the advantages of ceramic compared with metal. So, uh, when, uh, this is my advice, right? Okay, uh, when I answer the questions during my studies, when I might, when I question, uh, when I answer the question that asks the advantages or advantages, I also use the table. Okay, advantages and these advantages that way it helps you to uh, memorize and also helps you to uh, recall back your memory when you are answering these questions in the final exam <clears throat> so let's put it this way advantages and the advantages so you put it like this this is the ceramic and this is the metal so let's do this and find the advantages of ceramics find the advantages of metal and just write down in this column and then what are the disadvantages of the ceramic and what is the disadvantages of metal and you write down here so that way you uh, make uh, your lecturers understand more compared to you write down in term of paragraph okay so this way i can give you uh, easier marks based on uh, uh, spot on answers here so if you do like a paragraph like this just like an essay and maybe maybe uh we the lecturers are also the normal person maybe we can do the mistakes by ignoring some of your answers so uh this is my advice if you want to answer your your questions that uh, want the advantages and disadvantages and also the differences maybe you can write in term of uh, table your answers in form of table okay so this is the answers uh, before you check the answers make sure you do all this exercise by your own okay and this is the answers you can just pause this video and compare your answers with this uh, correct answers okay so let's go more into our syllabus okay these slides uh, tell about the brittle fracture of ceramics at room temperature both crystalline and non-crystalline ceramics almost always fracture before any plastic deformation can occur in response to an applied tensile load so at room temperature this is what we uh, are telling you at room temperature maybe around 27 or 30 degree or uh, from 20 or 30 degrees Celsius just a normal temperature in your room uh, but in this case we specify on 27 room temperature uh, there will be uh, f fractured occur first before any plastic deformation can occur so that's why your your kitchenware or your dinnerware your teacup and so on pinggan mangkuk awak semua tu akan pecah dulu 
dia tak jadi dia tak jadi melentur ke apa sebab dia kena pecah dulu that's, that's why uh, they have the brittle fracture properties here Okay, the brittle fracture process consists of the formation and propagation of cracks through the cross section of material in a direction perpendicular to the applied load. So, they can uh, depends on the, the applied load kepada material tersebut. Kalau contoh pecah, so load dia daripada bawah ke atas lah kan. So, dia akan pecah based on that direction. <coughs> okay, so... Uh, crack growth in crystalline ceramics may be either transgranular through the grains or intergranular along grain boundaries. Okay, so if you do not understand here, what is the transgranular and intergranular? Okay, just a little bit search in the Google, you can know intergranular. What is that granular? Or I have problem with my internet right now. So never mind, you can do your own search in the Google. And if you want to more deeper about this, you can read a lot uh, by only Googling. Google lah. Cari dalam Google. Okay. So for brittle ceramic materials, schematic, a schematic pre representation of crack origins and configurations that results from impact, point contact, loading, bending, torsional loading, and internal pressure. Okay, this is how it cracks. Okay, let's say uh, impact on or point loading. So let's say you use the nail and hammer, you, you crack down on that spot, and then it will just crack down. Right, starting from that point contact. And this is the torsion, how it cracks, and this is the internal pressure. Okay, what happens to internal pressure? Maybe it uh, due to the uh, heat expansion in that. Okay, that's why I warning you, if you use the glass water, you put the very cold water, and then somehow you uh, pour down all the coal and replace it with very hot water so the changes of the temperature between the cold and the high temperature uh, it can crack down your glass okay internal pressure because of the difference uh, differences between the heat from the high temperature and to the lower temperature it can crack your glass okay uh glass of ceramics okay ceramic materials uh Based on specific applications here, this is the class there, classification of ceramics. Okay, jenis-jenis dia. Kita, ada yang kita panggil glasses, yes, glass. Ada panggil clear product, tanah liat, refractories uh, yang buat pelik kan. Okay, uh, abrasive, sandpaper, cutting, polishing and so on. Cement, okay, and then advanced ceramic. So, this is uh, very advanced manufactured in the factories to get that specific products for the specific application okay so functional classification of ceramics uh, the ceramics are used in very uh, types in many types of uh, field uh, that can be functional in the electrical field Magnetic field, optical field, automotive field, and so on. Okay, there are many other things that can be used. Okay, so ceramics uh, are very functional and very versatile uh, in giving the the properties for that specific applications. Okay, as you can see here, electrical we have capacitor and so on, and for the automotive. Uh, we can have spark plugs, tires of ceramics. Yes, you can find that in the YouTube. How the tires uh, are made using the silicon outside. And of, of course, windshield. Cermin, kan? Cermin. Catalyst support, oxygen sensor and so on. And for the mechanical structures, we have the cutting tools. Uh, abrasive ni. Penting abrasive for polishing for the cutting in our equipments. Okay, biomedical, ada digunakan implants, dentistry, gigi, 
untuk gigi palsu and so on and for the construction yes this is what we are going to use for a very long a long time in the future concrete uh, cement kalau tak ada cement adalah rumah kat Malaysia ni sebab kebanyakan Malaysia masih lagi perlukan cement bukan Malaysia je satu dunia ok uh, so ceramics are very uh, useful and functional in most of the applications ok so let's go to the first type of ceramics here glass so Glasses are a familiar group of ceramics, container, windows, mirrors, uh, lenses, and so on. Kaca lah kan? Okay, there are non-crystalline uh, crystalline silicates containing other oxides, usually CaO, natrium oxide, uh, potassium oxide, and aluminium oxide, which influence the glass properties and its color. Uh, typical property of glasses that is important in engineering application is its response to heating. Okay, so this is uh, how the glass is made from the soda lime silica glasses uh, it consists of 70% silicon oxide and uh, sodium oxide and lime lime is calcium oxide okay and then you have uh, the silic uh, silicon oxide properties and so on in that glasses and finally it have uh it has the low density strength of silicon oxide interatomic bond and very hard tem melting temperature at 1710 degree of c okay so uh that's why uh glasses uh is fabricated to get that kind of properties and from that properties it cater the applications that we want in our daily uh, daily daily life okay so this is the example of glasses uh you are very familiar with these applications yes right okay and then uh most glass are amorphous uh non-crystalline but can be transformed to crystalline by heat treatment fine grain polycrystalline material and glass ceramics so uh, naturally it, it is non-crystalline but can be converted to crystalline by heat treatment okay and uh, it is easy to fabricate for the mass productions that's why uh, the glasses uh, is more common uh, and widely used in our daily life application okay so it because it is easy to fabricate and can be mass produced okay uh, the applications here also tells you uh, glasses can be used in the ovenware tableware or oven windows and so on okay uh, for extra information and just for your general knowledge uh, what is the gorilla glass uh, have you ever heard the gorilla glass i i guarantee you everyone you at least have gorilla glass under your position yes because gorilla glass is used in your smartphone okay smartphone or tablet okay what is the gorilla glass so if you want if you want to know extra information just find in the google search in the google what is the gorilla glass glass and uh why gorilla glass is used in the smartphone instead of other types of glass okay and then still uh, the slides about the application and the okay so the properties of glass ceramics uh, it has high strength stronger than stronger than glass okay what, what that's mean I don't know low coefficient of thermal expansion high temperature capabilities 
good biological compatibility. Uh, some optical transport, uh, transparent, others are opaque and electrical insulator. And other applications are listed here. Okay, so that's all about the glass, Cera glass ceramics. So let's have a five minute break. Uh, I have to stop this video right now and just continue with that with the clear products after this. And you as a viewer of my video, you can pause this video and go have a break about five minutes and continue after that. Okay, I insist you to have a five minutes break because we are going to learn more after this. Okay, let's have a break first. Okay. Uh, semua dah dapat 5 minit rehat ok kita sambung so let's get uh, to clear products so uh, before the break we have learned about the glass and now we have the clear products uh, this picture shows some examples about the clear products and uh, clear product is widely used as a ceramic raw materials, inexpensive ingredient found naturally in great abundance. Banyak kan? Great abundance. Awak boleh buat sendiri tanah liat dekat mana-mana lah. Awak jumpa. So, uh, by adding water to clay, uh, it is very amenable to shaping to form a plastic mass, enable extrusion and enable slip casting. Uh, the process of fabricate uh, the clay is quite simple just add water and then you can have a, a very manable to shape uh, and then uh, you can heat baka or firing uh, that clay to get the products and products okay uh, fired yang saya cakap tadi nak kena bakar uh, fire at elevated temperature to improve its mechanical strength to broad classification structural clear product structural integrity is important and white wax ok uh, sebab tu kalau awak tengok um, kalau small and medium entrepreneurs uh, also can fabricate and manufacture their own bricks clay bricks, uh, butter tu butter dekat, yang buat kat rumah tu awak boleh buat sendiri tapi nak dapatkan tanah liat dengan banyak, dengan yang elok, uh, yang tu lah jadi satu salah salah satu uh, proses bisnes awak ok, so kalau nak buat rumah sendiri teorinya boleh lah, kita hasilkan butter sendiri ok, and then the mixture of clay uh, 50% uh, of course come from the clay, the main the main ingredient of the clay uh, and 25% uh, of that filler uh, maybe from the quartz or finely ground quartz ni macam batu tu, batu kecil-kecil quartz tu batu, kalau bahasa Melayu dia batu apa dekat tanah batu, batu gunung tu ke, uh, tapi kecil lah kena finely ground sebab sebagai filler saja, sebagai pencukup je and then fluxy agent Okay, fluxing agent ni as a uh, agent to bind together the 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 components of the clay. Uh, the flux facilitates the formation of glass having a relatively low melting temperature. Okay. Uh, the properties: uh, load bearing strength, resistant to wear, resistant to chemical attack, attractive appearance, and an ability to take a decorative finish. Okay. Ni properties ni paling kan cantik kan untuk untuk buat rumah lah because of our house to be built to sustain a long time so to to withstand the extreme weather ribut peti apa semua so cantik lah dia resistance to wear dia, dia boleh tahan lama susah nak, nak susah nak <coughs> wasak dari segi masa tu and then resistance to chemical attack kalau uh, acid-acid ke apa semua kurang lah dia punya efek ok so products dia banyak lah so yang kita selalu jumpa lah boleh tengok lah yang mana hasil daripada tanah liat tu ok 
Okay. Uh, application. Okay. Once again, it shows the applications here that you can find in the bricks, chimney, conduits for sewage, and roof. Okay. Cuma nya. Uh, sekarang ni produk yang datang daripada clay daripada tanah liat ni agak mahal lah compare kalau kita, uh, daripada produk daripada semen daripada concrete or semen sebab uh, uh, structure uh, process of fabricating the clay is uh, more expensive and the uh, compared to the semen and concrete lah okay so that's for the structural clay and clay also can be used uh, to fabricate the white waste white waste ni macam ni uh, yang nak guna untuk makanan-makanan pinggang mangkuk ok uh, ceramic products that are white to off white in appearance sebab tu kita panggil dia white waste sebab dia hampir putih dalam bentuk uh, appearance dia uh, become white after high temperature firing ok dia bertukar bila kita dah panaskan kita bakar dia frequently contain a significant uh, vitreous or glassy component so uh, dia licin dan berkilat sikit macam uh, materials of glass tapi dia still daripada clay product ok properties dia uh, imperverseness uh, to fluid low conductivity of electricity chemical inertness and ability to be formed into complex shape Okay, product dia, China Dinoware, Laboratory Sins and Toilet, Dental Implants and Spark Plug Insulators. Okay, application of whiteware, macam kita tengok sini lah, pinggan mangkuk kita. Okay, uh, tandas kita, spark plug dan juga gigi. Okay, uh, so that's all about the clay and now we go to the refractory ceramics. Okay, banyak lagi dia nak cover. So, saya rasa uh, I can skip some of this example of ceramics uh, products. So, ni uh, refractory ceramics. Awak boleh, uh, you can read by your own. Boleh tolong baca lah apa beza dia nanti. And then, uh, based on the classification slide up here. Mana tadi? First ni. Okay, kat sini. So you maybe you can do your own mind map or your checklist. You list down the materials comparison between each type of ceramics. Ah, macam tu. So application differences between applications, their properties. Okay, apa guna untuk glass? Apa guna clay product? Kat mana refractory? Kat mana abrasive? Ah, uh, cements and others. Okay. Jadi tu cara dia nak ingat semualah. Kalau tak awak nak ingat satu-satu teks. One uh, one by one of the words in every slide. Uh, it is impossible to to memorize all those things lah. So uh, awak hanya generalize and then you remember based on your comparison. Senang macam tu cara nak hafal. Okay. So I skip uh, some of these slides. Abrasive ceramics. Uh, yes, we use uh, in tool and equipment uh, usually for uh, wear green and cut away of other materials uh, ataupun kita nak polish kita nak, nak potong ataupun kita nak uh, apa-apalah yang dekat other materials sebab kita tahu uh, ceramics ni dia uh, tough but brittle jadi untuk compare nak guna dia untuk uh, potong uh, steel elok lah sebab dia lagi kuat tapi dia brittle dia mudah pecah so uh, but the best of course is the diamond but the diamond is very expensive lah okay uh, if the tooling uh, use the diamonds of course it is very expensive so instead of using the diamond we can replace it with the abrasive uh, ceramics Pap uh, pasir, kertas pasir yang masuk jumpa kan ha, okay, tu pun salah satu juga lah ok then we go to the Siemens ok uh, Siemens, dia cakap sini apa uh, plaster of Paris and lime is also uh, the composition or mixture in the Siemens ok, we mix the Siemens plaster of Paris and lime known as binder uh, Siemens we know as a binder so 
awak tahu lah kan semen kegunaan dia apa and then uh, we can use the mortar mortar berbeza mortar dengan concrete kalau dari segi uh, pembuat uh, construction yang pembinaannya mortar ni kita nak lekatkan between uh, apa uh, yang 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 pekat lah nak jadi dia lebih glue properties compact to concrete. Concrete ni kita nak dapatkan kekerasan, ketahanan. Mortar ni biasa kita kena guna nak tampal a uh, a uh, mosaic, uh, okay, tile ke dekat rumah ke macam tu. Okey. A uh, concrete kita biasa guna untuk tapak sebab dia sangat padat, dia keras dan dia kuat. Sebab concrete kita campur banyak dengan batu, mortar more on uh, water and very fine sand. Yang ni Uh, batu ha, Yang ni jarang ada campur batu okay. So semua-semua ni untuk construction uh, You can read lah Okay uh, and then we have advanced ceramics Okay advanced ceramics uh, Micro electromechanical system Okay this is some uh, new field for research In mechanical engineering Okay uh, we short form The micro electromechanical system we call it MEMS. Okay, a miniature smart system consisting of a multitude of mechanical devices that are integrated with large numbers of electric elements, electrical elements on a substrate of silicons. Okay, the mechanical components are micro sensors and micro actuators. Micro sensors, blah 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 blah. Baca. Uh, this is for the advanced ceramics. Okay. Uh, more on a very uh, specific applications. Okay, uh, in some case in the MEMS, uh, we uh, are going to fabricate uh, to get the micro sensors and micro actuators. Okay, micro sensors ni yang level-level dia detect uh, suhu ke pressure ke tapi dia tu dalam bentuk size yang sangat kecil. Okay, sebab uh, size yang sangat kecil ni susah nak buat so this is more on advanced fabrications okay uh, using the ceramics and then bearing okay uh, normally the bearing uh, conventionally is fabricated from the steel stainless steel and so on but uh, in some cases we use the ceramics Okay, uh, that's why here uh, it tells you another new and interesting application of ceramic material is in bearings. Okay, similar to what I have uh, told you in in early of this video about the ceramic brick. Okay, so some of the steel applications can be replaced with the ceramics. Okay, because of maybe ceramics can withstand a lot of torsion, bearing and so on. But uh, still the the ceramics uh, when you have to manufacture advancedly here, it can uh, increase the cost compared using the steel. Okay, so this is quite interesting of facts that you know ceramics can replace the steel in some certain applications. Okay, and then for the electronics, packaging, and so on lah. So the 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 summary here is shown here, uh, from the main topic of ceramics, we have two main differences. One is the traditional, and one is the advanced. So the tra traditional ceramics here. White west, clay, brick and tile, abrasive ceramics, refractory ceramics, and cements. And for the advanced ceramics, uh, their chemical purchases and processing is more advanced fabric, uh, fabricately. Okay, uh, so the 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 normal ceramics that you find in our daily life, uh, most of them come from the traditional ceramics and a very high advanced uh, products that it's used only uh, in certain applications 
uh, it maybe comes from the advanced ceramics here okay so this is the general characteristics and finally we reach our ends of this video so this is the exercise uh, that you should do because uh, I think the questions here are very familiar that maybe or could be come out in your final exam or in your next quiz, quiz 4. Okay, so I hope you do these exercises and find the answers uh, by referring the notes here. And if you do not find the answers in the notes, you can Google kan boleh guna Google. Jadi daripada situ uh, awak mem, mem, menghafal sambil menjawab. Okay, that is uh, interest interesting idea how to memorize uh, your 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 knowledge, your information. Okay, tu cara lah. Dulu zaman saya pun macam tu. Okay, zaman uh, method saya uh, I download all the past years question. Awak, awak saya dah bagi tahu banyak kali. Okay, uh, past year question you can download from eqps running on eqps okay so this is very basic things as a uitm students awak kena download pass here eqps internet saya slow sorry lah Okay, EQPS, Electronic Question Paper System kat UITM. So, using your student ID and maybe the passwords. Awak check lah, jangan dapat passwords. Download semua final exam sebelum-sebelum ni. And then, awak jawab one by one soalan yang dalam past year tu. Boleh ambil dua, tiga tahun sebelum ni. So, satu tahun ada dua semester. Jadi, tiga tahun ada enam semester, enam soalan. Jadi jawab semua enam soalan tu. Jawab macam mana? Jawab sambil cari jawapan dalam nota. Tu cara dia. So awak boleh belajar lah. Tengok up, macam mana bentuk soalan dia. Sebab dia situ awak boleh tampak trend. Soalan pasir. Kadang-kadang dia hanya twist sikit soalan. Tapi jawapan masih lagi lebih kurang sama. Okay. Jadi nampaklah apa bentuk soalan. And how to answer that question. Okay, and for 4.3, uh, I will uh, cover in the next video. Lah. Okay, so we, we end our video, this part, part 2, video part 2 for the chapter 4 at this point. So make sure you learn and do the exercises and follow my advice. Okay, answer the past year questions. Okay, thank you. Okay, jaga diri semua. Jangan lupa daftar vaksin. Okay, sebab saya harap sangat semua student-student saya ni uh, percaya kepada sains. So, uh, vaksin is uh, cara terbaik sekarang untuk kita lawan lah. Lawan COVID-19. Okay, okay uh, jaga diri. Ikut SOP. Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera.